And the first is going to be a continuation from this morning uh, by Andre Pernipic, who I guess will tell us about uh, interacting topological superconductors. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so this morning we um, kind of gave this this flux insertion argument to show that an odd number of bands have uh, Majorana head modes. And I went through the experiment and I left off here. Okay? You probably put the mic in also. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, two, two mics. I will. Yeah. Two mics. One for the room, one for the room. Okay. First mic. Okay, so it looks like there is a zero bias peak with a splitting that's less than 45 microelectron volts, which is um, that's temperature data taken at 250 millikelvin, about five times lower or six times lower than the previous um, experiment. And there's confirmation, as I said, from both, like, uh, well, from the Berlin group and from the Basel group. What I want to show you now is that uh, this platform is much more versatile than thought than we thought, or than it would seem uh, at the beginning. And I don't want to tell you how to do braiding. There's a very easy way of doing braiding um, in these things, which just involves kind of like if you have a helix. So I guess I am telling you how to do braiding. If you have a helix, I just want to go very slowly through it. If you have a helix, you can and you take these atoms and you put them in a circle, you can kind of break the rotational symmetry of the circle by adding a magnetic field. And when you add the magnetic field, there's certain parts of the circle which are different angles to the magnetic field. Okay? And there's a domain wall in between at some point, depending on parameters. Um, where the angle basically goes from being parallel to the magnetic field to kind of being perpendicular. And this, at this domain wall, uh, weak Majorana is there, a weak being it's, it's slightly less localized than the ones I was showing before, for, for reasons that I can get into. But the, now the point is you can actually manipulate these Majoranas, so there's f the four of them will appear. You can manipulate these Majoranas by just switching, by just you know, adding an external magnetic field and rotating it. And you can leave your STM tip somewhere and rotate the magnetic field. And a remarkable thing would be to see the Majorana shuffling through the STM tip, right, as you rotate your magnetic field. And then a simple, well, I don't know if simple, but you can make two, ellip, ellip, um, two um, by the way, these, these things are not unknown. Uh, well, not un, not not un, you know. Basically, this was the 1999 picture or 1997. I don't know. I was a kid back then. Now I'm old. Um, of iron rings on copper. So they would take they would take iron. And they would make these rings. It was on copper, not on lead. But it's you know this atomic manipulation is basically very common these days. Okay. So making these rings is not uh, yes. Right, right, but the, 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 you're right, but the, the, the next step would be to take one of these irons and move them around. What? Well, how come they're not building their chains with SDMs? You think it would be a lot more efficient? So that's the next step to build the chains. So this is very efficient because they just, we just patter it and go, right? But, but yeah, but the next step, there's a, I mean, we already tried, well, Ali already tried to do this. There's a reason why, you know, we're looking for a new material. First of all, it's ferromagnetic, so it won't work. And you need a helix for this stuff, because if it's ferromagnetic, your magnetic field that you put in plane has the same angle with the ferromagnet moments and won't induce a transition. But if it's a helix or if the, you know, if the magnetic orientation of the iron was in plane, then, then the magnetic field that you add would have different angles. So that's, that's why you need a helix. So, so the iron on lead is not good for this for this purpose. Also, when you try to move atoms on lead, apparently lead is very soft. So you can't. So you know, when Ali tries to move iron atoms, just the lead just becomes a mess. So so this is so we need a different type of atoms. But you know, iron and lead are the simplest. So that's what they they tried first. But as a braiding technique, you can just it's very easy to just make two. You can now make two. Um, 
ellipses, not circles for some reason that I can tell you doesn't work with circles, two ellipses, and you again put a magnetic field. If they're at the right angle, you can kind of, by rotating the magnetic field, you create four myelonas on one ellipse, four myelonas on the other ellipse. By rotating the magnetic field, you can actually induce exactly what. Um, they would have to be, yeah. But then, but then they're sitting on the same surface, aren't they? They, well, you, you make them, well, that's, that's, you know. You something in between. Right. Both right, or, or you, you know, you, you, you arrange them at distances that are not uh, atomic, and then, like, you know, you kind of, like, you make one of them, you know. You make this large, and the other one you make it larger, or some 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 asymmetry, so that you know, so there's continuity between these sides, right? This, these are just the atoms. So this would go on a helix, and this would go on a helix. There's an issue here. You have to work with the time scale, so it doesn't jump like this. But it's mostly going to the Majorana. If you move the magnetic field, it's going to go through this. Okay. So there's a continuity issue where they intersect, but. But basically, the idea is, you know, like as a braiding technique, you can just kind of make these two ellipses, put a magnetic field, rotate it, and then you can have, you know, the one of the lines here, the blue line, for example, braids with an odd number of lines, and you introduce basically what the. Um, just imagine you were successful at braiding. Yeah. How would you know? Well. You know, this is a common theme that everybody in braiding gets asked. So, <laughs> that, I mean, it's very important, obviously, to detect it. <laughs> so you you can measure them. So the first thing that I would be like, you know, super happy about is just the circle. You just put the STM tip. You make the magnet the magnetic field do this, just the previous one, and then the STM tip. You see a zero bias peak without the STM tip moving. Right? That would be the first thing. That would be like, you know. I would be super happy with this, right? This would be kind of a remarkable thing if you could do this. Now, manipulation of localized yeah, but manipulation not through gates and through other stuff. You just you just had a magnetic field and you rotate it, which you can do in STM. And this myrans will just shuffle through the STM tip. But you know, you'd have to to actually, you know, to actually the way the way you actually, you know, you you can you can. You can measure them is you know you start you add the magnetic field slowly then then these two on the ellipse then these two two myrons would split right they would split locally there there will be some matrix elements that will tell you whether they split in the zero channel or the in the vacuum or the fermion okay and then you rotate them you do so you 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 tune the magnetic field you start amping it up the two myrons would split there's going to be two on the other side of the ellipse but two myrons would split. And they're going to be in some channel because they come out of the vacuum. Okay? Then you braid them. Then you know when they're coming back, they are in the opposite channel. They are, uh, right? So then, so then you ramp down the magnetic field. And you need to at attach an SET, a single electron transistor, to measure some charge there. You need to, you need to attach something else locally to measure it. You have to, you have to measure the charge before fusing. And do a two pi rotation and after fusing. Yeah. But that's, that's you have to do always, basically, roughly. So, OK. So I'm going to show you that this system supports interacting Majoranas. And not only does it support that, but it gives, it gives um, you know, maybe ways of, of seeing them. Um, OK. But before that, I want to go through the theory of you know, projective representations. So up to now, it should be clear that if I have a chain, a topological superconductor in one dimension, a Kitaev chain, there is a Majorana, call it gamma 1 here, and a Majorana gamma n here. Can I form a local Hilbert space with this Majorana? So by now, it should be clear that you can't, right? But now I'm going to put two Kitaev chains together. Just add them one, to, one on top of the other and call this gamma 2. And I'm not even going to draw this and think of them as semi-infinite. Okay? Don't think of them as semi-infinite, but just concentrate on one edge. Okay? Now, is there a local Hilbert space with 2? 
Um, so I can write a fermion, which is gamma 1 plus I gamma 2. OK, I can write a coupling generically. Every coupling that's allowed by symmetry exists. Coupling I gamma 1 gamma 2 with some matrix element exists. OK, this is a Hamiltonian alpha f dagger f minus 1 half. OK, and now my, my R zero modes, everything else is gapped. I don't talk about these gap states. My R zero modes have, I had two, they split. One of them is at energy minus alpha over two, one of them, one of these complex fermions. Now the ground state is what? Filling, I know we've had lunch, but like, you know, I mean, uh, yalla. What's, uh, what's the ground state? Take it positive. OK, so it's, it's just unoccupied. It's, thank you, the 0. But the point in case is that it's singly degenerate. OK, now singly degenerate ground states with open boundary conditions, we will call them trivial, completely trivial, right? So that's, 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 you know, in terms of non-interacting topological insulators and interacting ones that have a ground, that have, for the purpose of today's talk, we'll call ground states that when I open the boundary conditions are singly degenerate, those are trivial. Everything, all these systems when I close the boundary conditions have singly degenerate ground states because they are, ins they are you know, band insulators so far. So I just fill up some states. But when I open the boundary conditions, they have degeneracy if they're topological. For example, this chain had a degeneracy associated with this non-local Hilbert space. Two chains, if I don't introduce coupling between them, have a degeneracy, two-fold degeneracy on this side, because two myrons make one fermion, two-fold degeneracy on that side. But now I can introduce couplings between them, and the degeneracy disappears. So generically, this is why you can tie chain is Z2. If I put two of them together, I get nothing. OK? <clears throat> so now what I want to do is ask you what would prevent the existence of this term? What would prevent the existence of this coefficient? So I want to argue that complex conjugation would prevent the existence of this coefficient. Right? Complex conjugation K. This is when you act, k to the minus 1 is obviously equal to k. This is when you act it on any number, on any anything here, gives you minus i. Right? So if I had complex conjugation as a good symmetry of my Hamiltonian, would this term be allowed to exist? Consider, uh, imagining that gamma 1 and gamma 2 don't change also. right? OK, but we know what type of symmetry complex conjugation is. And since we've been talking about single bands, so we've been talking about, you know, I didn't introduce pin here, right? Remember, I, I just told you you have an odd number of bands. <coughs> complex conjugation is just time reversal for spinless electrons. And it's easy to prove this time reversal, because time reversal you know, changes x to x and p to minus p. Hence, it changes the commutator of x and p, which is i. Okay? And spinless electrons means that t squared is 1, because t squared, if I had spin, would flip the spin also. So you'd get a phase from the spin. But since they're spinless, t squared is 1. So this is good. OK? Is this the time reversal that we have in condensed matter in these systems that I showed you here? Is it the time reversal? No. Our time reversal here, our electrons actually have spin. So we have a you know, normal time reversal with t squared equals minus 1. So, so far, I'm showing you things that potentially are unrealizable. But we'll see they are realizable. OK. So the reason why I want to realize this is that something very interesting happens. So this term is not allowed, right, with time reversal. So what's the degeneracy on one edge? 
then. I'm not allowing with time reversal I alpha gamma 1 and times gamma 2 is not allowed. What's the degeneracy on the edge? So gamma 1 and gamma 2 remain at 0. So what's the degeneracy? At zero energy, it doesn't matter if I fill or unfill this fermion, this complex fermion. So what's the degeneracy? So I see like I see a victory sign from <laughs> or if you're Australian or English, it's a completely different story. <laughs> Nobody knows what this means in Australian or English. Do you? <laughs> no? Okay. Well, it means something very bad. <laughs> it's the same as the one finger salute, but in Australia. That's why when Bush went to Australia and did this, it showed up on all the newspapers. <laughs> so, so the degeneracy is 2, because I have this is gamma 1 and gamma 2. So I have 0 and f dagger 0, okay, as the two degenerate ground states. But I have first have to tell you how this time reversal acts on these operators. Well. What I have to, what I claim is that time reversal on the initial electron operators on any side j just gives you the same operator, right? This is, this is how time reversal acts. I don't have spin, so it doesn't do anything to the actual operator. And since Cj is roughly gamma plus i gamma prime, okay? I can decompose it into two Majoranas. Then time reversal on gamma, time reversal to minus one, is equal to gamma from here to here. So time reversal on each of these Majoranas just acts the same way that it acts on the C operator. And this will always take to be true. Time reversal doesn't change the Majorana operators on this side but it changes i to minus i. So this term i gamma 1 gamma 2 is not allowed. Moreover, if I have now, now n wires, let me just take this. If I have, say, whatever, a number n of Kitaev wires, add them together. So this is gamma 1, call it uh, small n, gamma 1, gamma 2, all the way to gamma n. What's the one body Hamiltonian that I can write down that couples them generically? Couples all these. Okay? If it's one body, it's going to be gamma i, gamma j, right? Times what? Times some matrix, a i j, times i. And this i is very important, and a i j is equal to minus a j i. These are conditions imposed by fermion statistics and hermeticity. Yes? Um, for this equation, if both of those are true, wouldn't Cj equal gamma minus i gamma prime and gamma plus i prime? So, so, so you spotted something that I didn't want to go into. The transformation of this other gamma is minus gamma prime. Okay? And that's actually. I really don't want to go into this, but 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 because but this is kind of is very important. At one end of the wire, the Majoranas transform as T gamma, T to the minus one is equal to gamma. At the other end of the wire, the Majoranas transform as T gamma, T to the minus one is equal to minus gamma. So the Majoranas on this end of the wire, the reason why you can understand them, so this you can see clearly from the Kitaev picture. And this is actually very, it's, it's, it's fundamental they transform differently because when you bring them together, they have to annihilate. And if they, trans, if they transform the same, they couldn't actually. Or if you put, I'll show you, if you put two Kitaev wires versus six Kitaev wires, you know, you get eight Majoranas, which are supposed to be equal to zero, but you know that the bulk topological states are, are, are different. So where's the issue? Well, the issue is that these end of the wire and this end of the wire transform differently under time. And we can see it. Let me just show you why. So we can get from the Kitaev wire. This is C1. These are the true electron operators, C2, C3. OK? These electron operators have this property. Each of these operators, this is gamma 1, gamma 1 prime. Gamma 2, gamma 2 prime. 
in this notation, yes? Gamma 3, gamma 3 prime. Cn. Gamma n, gamma n prime. The Kitaya phase is the phase where this is dimerized with this, this is dimerized with this, etc., and this is dimerized with this. At the end, I have gamma 1 and gamma n prime. They transform exactly the opposite. So is that clear? On this side, all, all of them transform, transform as this. That's right. That's right. So I'm going to take, I'm going to make a copy of the first wire and put it below it. Otherwise, if I took the first wire, translated it, that would, could gap immediately. Okay. okay? So a gamma, so a gamma, a gamma one Majorana can immediately gap with a gamma prime Majorana without breaking time reversal symmetry because of this minus. Does that make sense? Yes. Good. Great. Great question. Although I didn't want to get into it. <laughs> What? Right. So you see, this is the Kitaev. Uh, this is the Kitaev. Um, the Kitaev chain. Right. It's the dimerization between Majoranas in between unit cells. This is topological. Sorry. This was an argument that says that the, although the C's all transform with the plus sign. This end. Yeah. Plus all I'm saying is that in the in the C's. The C is made of two Majoranas. The C is transformed like this. This transforms exactly the opposite as this one. Does the C have a minus sign or a plus sign? Plus. Okay. 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 So, so if this C transforms this way, each C is transformed this way, this Majorana and this Majorana transform exactly the opposite. This transforms as plus, this transforms as minus. Because T gamma 1, T to the minus 1, plus T i gamma 1 prime, this. Sorry, sorry, I'm good. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah, now it makes sense. Okay, good. Yes. So isn't it a matter of convention which one you call gamma and which one you call gamma prime? It's, no, it's not a matter of convention. I mean, once you, once, you, once you chose it, it's not a matter of convention if you want to keep the time reversal symmetry. If you want to keep the time reversal, I could call it, you know, the opposite in the next one, okay? But then this coupling would not maintain time reversal. Okay? I'm taking one and I'm I'm making a copy of it. Okay? So if I couple this one with this one, that coupling would not maintain time reversal, for example. Okay? So it's, it's fundamental to realize, is it like it's, it's, fu yeah, so it's fundamental that they transform differently because if you close the chain, I can close the chain by making i gamma 1 gamma n prime. Okay? That's how I close my chain, my Kitaev chain. Right? If I, I have to get rid, this has to be allowed because I have to get rid of degeneracy. Now, if gamma 1 and gamma n prime transform the same under time reversal, this would not be allowed because I. So they have to transform opposite. Is that, that's a very crucial, is everybody clear on that? Yeah, the, the convention he's talking about is that does gamma 1 have the minus sign of gamma n? Oh, uh, well, that's, that's, that's a gauge factor that I don't care about. But is this clear? And you know you can see it just by this. Even if even if I didn't have even if I didn't have these you know zero correlation length Hamiltonian, I had a more complicated Hamiltonian with a Majorana mode here and a Majorana mode here. I know that if I close the chain, I should be able to write down this term. Hence, this guy and this guy has to have to transform differently under time reversal for this term to be allowed. Yeah. So these two ends transform differently as is. As was, was you know, very uh, astutely remarked. Um, it seems like your time reversal symmetry for two chains depends on a convention. No, 
It doesn't. You just pick, no, you just pick both, you just take a copy and you pick both of them. You know, it doesn't. If you allow, it's a matter of taking one chain, doubling it, or taking one chain, moving in this direction. Right, so I can, it doesn't, so, every chain that I built has some convention, okay? Okay, now, now, now take a chain and if you want the opposite convention, I take the chain and I flip it. It's just a matter of like, I'm asking how many topological states there exist. If you want the opposite convention here, well, I'm gonna flip this chain and then I'll couple these, okay? Just, just don't worry about convention. Like, this is the convention. I'm just giving you. Let's just move on. I don't want to go. I don't want to stay here with this. Okay. If, if you want this convention here, I'll just flip this chain and put the gamma two prime here. And that's another state that's that's not that's that's allowed by this time reversal. Okay, let's if you want this if you want this convention here, gamma two gamma two. Okay, then then that's not a, obviously there's not a consistent convention between this and this. But I can just flip this one and you know just flip the chain and put this one here, and then I still have two Majoranas which are which are which which can't gap. But take the same convention and just multiply the chain. The point is there's always a way to add chains so that this term is not allowed. Okay? No matter which convention you take, you can even, if you want to be a masochist, you can even take different conventions for each wire. Okay? No matter which convention I take, there's always a way of combining wires that won't allow this term. Either flip them or do something, okay? So this is real. Where is this? Okay, cool. So this is real, and this is guaranteed by fermion anti-commutation and um, hermeticity. And you can prove that hermeticity changes this into this star, and that will prove you that it's real. So is this allowed by time reversal? I need to, you know, this. I really get paid by the hour here. So let's. Can you tell me if this is allowed by time reversal? Is it? Yes. No. Maybe. Come on, guys. <laughs> Don't let me beg. <laughs> so I and J, they have all. They have the same properties. One of the problems is the end of the star. The what? You have to see your marker. We need we need the black marker for you. Okay. So this is real. This matrix is real. Are is this term allowed by time reversal? Yes. How? <laughs> so time reversal. What does time reversal do? I don't mind. Okay, so is it allowed by time reversal? Is this term, does this term break time reversal or not? If you act on it on time, with time reversal, what does it do? Time reversal is complex conjugation. What does a real number do under complex conjugation? Nothing. These operators so remain the same, okay? As we said before, they just remain the same. Okay, gamma one, gamma two. What does the I do? Is this term allowed by time reversal? Good. Okay? So I'm allowed not so I'm not allowed to add any one body terms. Hence, if I have just one body terms, then the classification of 1D topological superconductors with T squared equals 1 is Z. In other words, I'm allowed to add any number of Majoranas as long as I just I put the constraint that I only couple them by one body term, so quadratic terms in Majoranas. Those terms are not allowed by time reversal. I can't couple them. 
Now let's see what happens, classification Z. Let's see what happens once they add interactions. Okay? And that's important. <coughs> so, can I add interactions? So I'm just going to focus on the even chains. The reason for that is the odd chains are kind of like the even chains. The odd number of chains are kind of like the even number of chains plus an extra non-local Hilbert space. The even number of chains, they can have a local Hilbert space, so they're very susceptible towards local terms, like one-body terms, which are not allowed by time reversal. But I can add interacting terms. If I have two Majoranas, can I add interacting terms? Interacting are four Fermi terms. Can I add four Fermi terms with just two Majorana operators? No, because if I do gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 1, gamma 2, that's gamma 1 squared, which is 1, gamma 2 squared, which is also 1, so that's minus 1. OK? These are just constants. OK? So I can't add these terms and induce a splitting. So with two Majoranas, I have a twofold degenerate ground state the two ground states are in what fermion parity sectors same or opposite so opposite fermion parity sectors this is important now let's do four Majoranas. So three Majoranas is like two Majoranas plus a non-local Hilbert space, because I have odd number of Majoranas. Not very interested in it, because I already know what two Majoranas do. Let's try four Majoranas. So I couple four chains. The chains are gapped. The Majoranas are very close to zero energy. I can't add any this is infinite assume the bulk gap I can't add any one body term gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 1 gamma 3 but I can add an interacting term now what's the interacting term that I can write down hmm someone what's what's a four Fermi term that I can write down Thank you. All right. This I can write down, and this can come out of i times this, which was not allowed by itself, times i times this, which is also not allowed by itself, because they were both time reversal breaking. But now i times i is 1. So this is a perfectly well time reversal invariant Hamiltonian that I can add. For example, it would be kind of like a many body coupling. It's allowed by symmetry on the edge. It's allowed by symmetry, it'll exist generically. I add it with an alpha. So I want to look at, this will split these states. And I want to look if I can split these states to a singly degenerate state. If my ground state of this Hamiltonian, this is the only term I can write down, by the way, in this small subspace. I don't worry about these. And I want to see if I can get to something that's singly degenerate, right? I've argued that single degeneracy on the edge means trivial, OK? If I can get something that's singly degenerate, then I can just crank up this value alpha to infinity, and my system will be trivial, right? Because I'll just get, say, I get to something singly degenerate, alpha, there's some states here. I just crank up the value of alpha. So my system can look like this, which is trivial, bulk states. OK. Out of this, I can form one fermion, complex fermion. F1 is gamma 1 plus i gamma 2. Out of these, I can form the second complex fermion, F2 gamma 3 plus i gamma 4. What is this Hamiltonian then? Someone. My, it's a, uh, yes, so that's very good. It's just minus one half. Thank you. Okay. Take alpha positive. What are the two ground states 
Um, what, are, what is the spectrum of this Hamiltonian? What are the ground states for alpha positive? Let's say, let me define the state 0, which is annihilated by all the f operators. What are the ground states? So it's the ground states are f2 dagger 0, f1 dagger 0. Yeah? Of energy minus alpha over 4. All right. First thing that you need to notice, and if alpha was negative, the ground state would be unoccupied, 0, and f1 dagger 0 times f2 dagger 0. Right? Still twofold degenerate. Ground state is twofold degenerate. Hence, ground state degeneracy is a crab diagnostic of topological order because it doesn't fully diagnose. Right? There's no, there's no difference between two Majoranas and four Majoranas in terms of ground state degeneracy. It's still twofold degenerate. Yeah. Okay. But what is, what does distinguish this case from this case? is that in this case, the ground states have what fermion parity? Same fermion parity. In this case, it's odd. But if I took alpha to be positive, it will be even. Because alpha positive, the ground states are 0, and f dagger 1, f dagger 2, 0. OK? Same fermion parity. All right, so far, so good. I can distinguish between g different ground states. Let's now do six Majoranas. Thank you. So I do six Majoranas, gamma 1, gamma 2, on one edge. I multiply six. I put six guitar wires together, gamma 4, gamma 5, gamma 6. OK, so gamma 1 gamma plus i gamma 2 is f1. Gamma 2 plus i gamma 3 is f2. Gamma 5 plus i gamma 4 is f3. OK, and I'm going to write down the following interaction Hamiltonian. You can check others, but there's only a limited amount of Hamiltonians you can write down because you only have, you know, you got six Majoranas, you've got two to the three Hilbert space, so an eight-fold Hilbert space, an eight by eight matrix. You can certainly diagonalize, especially since it's got, you can break it into even and odd um, uh, fermion um, sectors. So you can write down the most general Hamiltonian you'd want to. There's only very few terms. But I'm only going to write a special case. You can write down your most general Hamiltonian that you want to, look into it, and convince yourself that the same remains true. Yes, thank you. Yes, this is horrible. <laughs> I know. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is what I actually mean. So now I'm going to take the Hamiltonian time reversal invariant. Okay, this Hamiltonian is f1 dagger f1 minus 1 half, f2 dagger f2 minus 1 half. Um, this is f2 dagger f2 minus 1 half times f3 dagger f3 minus 1 half. OK? This guy alone, if I just looked at this guy, take alpha positive, OK? has four states, four ground states that are degenerate, this guy. So let's write them down for alpha positive. Well, one of them is f1 dagger 0, f2 dagger 0. OK, those are the two. The other one is f1 dagger. I can add f3, because if I just look at the first one, f1 dagger f3 dagger 0 f1 dagger, f3 dagger 0, f2 dagger, f3 dagger 0. Right? These are energy minus alpha over 4 in the first one. Agreed? Yes? I have uh, one confusion. Uh -huh. When you say, when you add the interaction uh, into, into this uh, wire, so your ground state is the many-body ground state. It's always, 
It's always the many body ground state. It's but, but I can feel, like, like you see, you, you, you drop this uh, spectrum. That, so for me, I, um, ground state should be the lowest energy. But unless it's degenerate. So these are degenerate. Uh -huh. Right. So, so that's the that's the that's the question whether the the ground state is always the lowest energy by definition. Now the question is whether the lowest energy is singly generate, which means you'd have a trivial state, completely trivial, or on the edge, or you still have some degeneracy. Okay. If you still have some degeneracy, it's still something non-trivial because it's not a band. It's not a pure band insulator with open boundary conditions. Just an atomic limit band insulator would just have single degenerate ground state with or without open boundary conditions. This one has a twofold degenerate. These states are degenerate. They're lo lowest energy states, but they're degenerate. But there's two of them. Okay. You, you Counting on the zero, at the zero energy. So no, no, no. These, no, these are, no, these are now in many body. Okay. So now we have to take a many body. That was single particle. Oh, yeah, yeah. The many body, you just fill up all the low energy levels. The bulk gap is filled. In many body, there's two levels. These two, at minus alpha over four, and there's level zero. at alpha over 4. This is the ground state. It's doubly degenerate. OK? All right. This term has four ground states. But now I add the second term with the same alpha. Which one does it, which one become the lowest ground state out of this? Huh? Which one out of these four full degenerate, which are the ground state of this guy, which one become the lowest of the second? Two of these lift up, two of these lift down. The F2 dagger is zero and the F2 dagger is zero. F2 dagger is zero, and which one? F2, F3. F2, F3. Sorry, no, the F1, F3. Thank you. OK, this is the twofold degenerate ground state of six Majoranas. There's still a twofold degeneracy. I'm going to erase these. So once I add these two terms with the same coefficient alpha, these terms are classical. They commute. So that's why I could diagonalize the first one and then in whatever subspace I choose, diagonalize the second one. This is the twofold degenerate ground state. Again, ground state degeneracy, a crap way to characterize a topological state, because on the edge even, because it's the same ground state degeneracy. But now you notice there's even a bigger problem. The bigger problem is that these two, in the case of six Majoranas, what fermion parity are these in? Same or opposite? So how do I distinguish two Majoranas from six Majoranas? Well, it would seem I have no way of distinguishing them by fermion parity, right? But that's not true. There is a way of distinguishing them, just not by fermion parity. <coughs> and to understand how to do it, we're going to have to see how time reversal, which is the only other symmetry that I have in the problem, acts on these ground states. So the rule of the thumb is in every topological state, be it you know, with, with, with edge modes, you just look at first the degeneracy of the edge modes, then the way the symmetries act on the edge modes. And the different ways the symmetries act on the edge modes characterize the different phases. And this is the same thing as just counting the projective representations of whatever group. Here is the group made by particle whole conjugation, fermion parity, time reversal, and their product. Let's see how it acts on this. So I'm going to take like five more minutes. Is that OK? Well, not now. I'm going to take five more minutes over. I'm just <laughs> over, <laughs> over this. OK, thank you. Just five. OK, so I'm going to see how time reversal acts on these. So let me do it for the two case. So I know that the time reversal acts on this fermion, F, as what? It leaves gamma 1 invariant, leaves gamma 2 invariant, but changes i. So it acts as F dagger. And this is the fundamental thing that's the messed up, not the messed up, but the interesting thing here, right? On the, on the site, 
on the, on the stout fermion C, it leaves them invariant. But on this, low, on this Hilbert space on the edge, it transforms F into F dagger just because my fermion on the edge was made with gamma 1 plus i gamma 2. Okay? And that's the crucial thing. <coughs> so knowing this, I'm going to ask what does T when acting on the state 0 give? What are my options? Well, I claim my options are threefold. I'm working in a Hilbert space, which is the Hilbert space of this low energy. So I can't, T on 0 can't hit me, can't take me to the bulk, make the gap infinite. Can't take me to a state in the bulk. So somehow T times 0 has to give me something that's spannable by this Hilbert space. And since I have fermion parity as a good quantum number, what it can do is it can either annihilate it, 0, or it can give me the state back up to a phase, which doesn't matter, so I'm taking it. Or it can give me this other state. These are the three options, OK, that t on 0 can give me. Now, I want to show you that t times 0 cannot give me 0. And the way to show that is to realize that t squared on every state psi psi is t on psi is just complex conjugation. And t on psi is also complex conjugation. So I have psi psi star. OK? So if the norm of a state is non-zero, so if psi psi is 1, then t psi t psi is also 1. Hence, this option is ruled out because 0, 0 is equal to 1. OK? It's a normalized state in my Hilbert space. Now let's see if the if this, if this option, what, which one of these two options it is. And I argue is the second option. And in order to see that, I'm just going to compute what t f dagger 0 is. So t f dagger 0 is t f dagger t to the minus 1 times t 0. But t f dagger t to the minus 1 is what? What's t f dagger t to the minus 1? f t 0. Okay, so if t times 0 is 0, f on 0 would be 0. Yes? Is that clear? So if, this t, if t times 0 is equal to itself, the 0 state, then f would kill it. So then I would have t f dagger 0 is equal to 0. But I know that can't be true because f dagger 0, which is the state 1, has non-zero norm. So it's got non-zero norm. So hence, t f dagger 0 also has one non-zero norm. So this can be true. So then, the only option I've got left is that t 0 is equal to f dagger 0. OK? Is that clear? And this is always true for any ground state. So if I have, in the, in the four cases, I'm going to get just Time reversal, when you act on this Hilbert space that you define on this edge, this is kind of a made up Hilbert space that I've defined on the edge, gives you just the particle or conjugation times it. Okay? Uh, or just f dagger. Okay? All right, so this is how it acts. And now I can obviously know what t f dagger 0 is. What's t f dagger 0? What does this give me? Come on. Huh? What? So t acts as sigma x times complex conjugation. OK? Let's do it for four Majoranas now. Let's do the same thing for four Majoranas. And t squared is equal to 1, right? Because sigma x squared is equal to 1. Let's do it for four Majoranas. <clears throat> what is t times 0 in 4 Majoranas? By the same arguments that I presented here, what is it? OK. You can go through it in the same way that I went here by working the Hilbert space of either these two states or these two states. OK. So now t f2 dagger 0 is equal to t f2 
dagger t to the minus 1 times t0, so times f1 dagger f2 dagger 0, which is equal to f2 f1 dagger f2 dagger 0. But now you see I have a fermion commutation, anti-commutation to go through. So I have a fermion anti-commutation to go through. This is minus f1 dagger 0. And t f1 dagger 0 is f1 f1 dagger f2 dagger 0, which is just f2 dagger 0. So how does time, time reversal act now? As what's the rep matrix representation in this Hilbert space of the twofold degenerate ground state? What's the matrix representation of time reversal? I have a complex conjugation. And what matrix have I got here? Come on. F2 goes into minus F1. I sigma y. OK? So what's t squared? OK. So you first encounter something quite neat that although t squared is 1 on you know, the initial Hilbert space of the initial operators that you had the real electron operators that you know, the condensed matter electrons on the Hilbert space of the edge, t squared is minus 1. And this is kind of a stereotypical example of projective representation. OK? Moreover, both of these are doublets. This is a doublet, two states. This is a doublet, two states. But they're different kinds of doublets. This doublet is different than this doublet because this is a Kramer's doublet. This is a particle hole doublet. They differ by particle, they differ by fermion parity. This has the same fermion parity. So the question immediately raises, why can't they split? You know, well, they can't split because time reversal acts on them as it would act on a spin 1 half. So you've got Kramer's degeneracy. OK? So that's why they can't split, really. So these two are like a spin. OK? So now you see that this state differs from this state in both Particle num these two states differ from these two states in both particle, num particle uh, parity and in the way time reversal acts on them. That's misleading. If I looked at the other edge of the chain, these time reversal operator on the two Majorans would be the same as this one. OK? So these two states, the two Majorana chains and the four Majorana chains, the two degenerate ground states which are interacting in both cases, the only thing that differentiates them is fermion parity. These two are in the same fermion parity sector. These two, uh, these two are in the different fermion parity sector. These two are in the same fermion parity sector. OK? Time reversal doesn't differentiate them, actually, although it looks like it does. OK? If I looked at the other side of the chain, two Majoranas, would have time reversal equal to i sigma yk, and four Majorans would also have time reversal equal to i sigma yk. OK? But I don't care about time reversal here, because I already distinguished them by fermion parity. Clear? I can distinguish two Majorans. And six Majoranas is different. Six Majoranas is different fermion parity, so Fermion parity doesn't distinguish them from the two Majorana case, but time, rever but time reversal does. So TF2 dagger 0, this is equal to F2. What's T times 0? I only got like 10 minutes, so what's T times 0? F1 dagger, F2 dagger, F3 dagger 0, yeah, by the same token. So T ta F2 dagger 0, this is F2, F1 dagger, F2 dagger F3 dagger 0 is minus F1 dagger F3 dagger 0. And T on F1 dagger F3 dagger 0 is going to give you F2 dagger 0. So time reversal here also acts as I sigma yk. OK? Just like in the 4 Majorana case. So time reversal here in the 6 Majorana 
is different from time reversal in the two Majorana case. And that's a meaningful thing. If I was to do this, the same type of thing on the other side of the chain, what would happen is that this representation would stay. If I have four Majoranas, I would have exactly nothing would change. But these representations would get switched. So two Majoranas would have t squared equals minus one, but six Majoranas would have t squared equals one. The point is that's the point is that the, the, the way the symmetry acts is different, and you're able to distinguish two Majoranas from six Majoranas through the action of time reversal. Is that absolutely clear? OK. Now, can somebody tell me what happens if I add eight Majoranas together? If I add eight Majoranas together, well, now it's very simple. Gamma 1 to gamma 4, and gamma 5 to gamma 8. I can add a term, which is alpha gamma 1 gamma 4 plus alpha gamma 5, OK, interacting term. This one gives me two doublets, f1 dagger 0, f2 da uh, this one gives me one doublet. This one gives me another doublet, f3 dagger 0, f4 dagger 0. This is like a spin, so let's call this operator. Let's call the operator f1 dagger, f2 dagger, sigma f1, f2, call it S1. Let's call this operator f3 dagger, f4 dagger, sigma f3, f4, call it S2. This is a fourfold general ground state with this interaction, but I'm allowed to add any interaction terms that are time reversal invariant. So now I'm going to add an interaction term, which is time reversal invariant, which is js1 dot s2. Right? I can couple spins together, anti-ferromagnetically or ferromagnetically. I don't care. What's the spectrum of S dot S? Two spin one half can combine to give you what? Spin one and spin zero. And I can always tune this J so that the spin zero, which is a singly degenerate state, is the lowest energy state. Yes. So I can always tune. So this spectrum of this is s equals 1, and this is s equals 0. I can always tune this by picking the right j, the right sign of j, so that my s equals 0 is the lower state. And I've, I've come to a singly degenerate ground state. So 8 Majoranas is equal to 0 Majoranas. It's trivial. So this is called the Z8, the Z to Z8. So Z non-interacting, Z8 interacting. And we've learned something about you know, that the way representations act is crucial in characterizing topological states. Yeah, yes. Lucas, Fidotsky, and this is Fid right. Fidkowski Right. So um, is your proposal that you can use the, the instant setup and make eight wires or six wires? Well, I can, I, the, this setup has this symmetry in it. So I'm going to show you how to get this symmetry uh -huh. now in the last five minutes. So the way you get this symmetry is the following. So you want to have spin dispermions, but you were talking about having I want to get a symmetry. Something. Yeah, I don't, have, I don't have spinless fermions. I have spinful fermions. So, okay. so that's a problem. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, but you have fermions. I mean, it helps, it helps, well, that usually would break even symmetries even more. But you've got, you know, um, um, but does your Majorana end states have spin? They, uh, you know, with the spin STM data has, you know, we, have, we haven't taken it. Well, Ali hasn't taken it. So don't I don't know if they have spin in the experiment. If they're one of them, they're certainly spin polarized across. They've got two spins. The majority of the spin is on this, the same you have axis. Spin polar, you have spin in this layer, don't you? No, the, the time reversal, first of all, time reversal is broken. Okay? But if it wasn't broken, time reversal would act at, they all have spin, yeah. you know, they have spin orbit coupling. They have, so t squared is minus one in the R system. So there's no way around that, but time reversal is broken. So I want to get to t squared equals one on the chain. So I want to get to something t squared equals 1. But our t squared is equal to minus 1. 
And if t squared is equal to minus 1, there's no difference between the interacting classification and the non-interacting classification of the Kitaev chain. So you can't look at the interacting effects. All right. But <coughs> this is lead, and this is wire. And the magnetic moments are here. Now, you have Rajba spin orbit coupling. You have a lot of other things on the plane. OK? So I claim now, call this x, y, z. So I claim there's an extra symmetry in the problem that should be exploited. And this symmetry is the following. Look at the mirror plane, zx. On average, if you forget about impurities, but even if you don't forget imp about impurities, if you quench them and you have, you know, on average, you know, just the impurities are, are, are spatially distributed um, in such a way that on average they preserve mirror symmetry. There's, <coughs> without magnetic field, there's a mirror plane. And this mirror plane is zx, which sends y into minus y. And is located exactly on the wire. Okay, it cuts through the wire like this. Okay, Rajba is mirror symmetric, by the way, like spin orbit coupling, lead is mirror symmetric. Without, magnetic, without the magnetic moment, um, there's a mirror symmetry, and I'm going to call it MZX. Okay? But what does a magnetic field that's parallel to a mirror plane do? Okay? So, magnetic field has an annoying property that it's an axial vector. So, stuff that's perpendicular to a mirror plane would not switch. But if it's parallel, an axial vector switches. Okay? So mirror sends magnetic moment, sends S iron into minus S iron. But time reversal also sends magnetic moments into minus magnetic moments. So that's why a fully polarized system neither has mirror symmetry nor time reversal. OK? But it obviously has the combined symmetry which you call it a magnetic symmetry, which is mirror times time reversal. OK? And the interesting thing about this symmetry, mirror xz, is that this symmetry, when you square it, time reversal commutes with every spatial symmetry. So this is mxz squared times minus 1. But mirror flips the, a spin 1 half, right? Spin 1 half is flipped by mirror symmetry once by mirror, again by mirror squared. So mirror squared in spin 1 half system is what? Minus 1. OK? So then this becomes 1. So I have a symmetry on the chain that squares to 1 and contains, it's a unitary matrix, some unitary matrix times complex conjugation. So let's pick this unitary matrix to be 1 in some basis. I don't care. So basically, these chains have the same symmetry class as, as Kitaev uh, uh, Fitkowski, is what I said before. And um, interacting, and you can basically potentially check this, this breakdown of Z to Z8 through various methods that I don't have time to tell you about. So. You have them? I have some methods. Uh, I haven't published them, so I have some methods of doing them. They basically kind of involve condo couplings. Because this edge thing that's a spin one half representation can couple will couple differently if you bring a spin next to it or not. So okay. So thanks. Yeah, they sit on ridges. So I showed this while you were sleeping in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how they look. This is like a topography image of it. This is this you're looking like this on the chain. Okay, the chain is in this direction. And here is like you're just flipping. Basically this is the chain. You're looking at it like this. OK?
So, uh, so spatial symmetries, unless it's inversion, inversion is the only spatial symmetry that doesn't flip spin. So spatial symmetries all, always also also flip spin, just like you know, like um, 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 mirror flips some. Um, you know, it flips a magnetic field that's parallel to it, right? It doesn't flip some components of the spin, but in the end, if it's parallel to it, it flips it, right? So then if I flip it twice, think of, it, think of the spin as a, as a B, as a vector B, right? Mirror flips it, mirror squared flips it again if it's parallel to it. So that's a phase of 2 pi for a spin 1 half. So that's minus 1. Yes, so this is fundamentally, I mean, this symmetry fundamentally is only exact for iron states pointing in the z direction as they are in the experiment. But you can, you know, if iron states fluctuate, but the fluctuation around this direction is zero, you, you can basically interpret that as disorder and quench it. And, and you get, you know, it's the same, basically the same physics. As long as the disorder, you can put disorder in, as long as disorder on average respects mirror symmetry, you're fine. Um, for the case of six you don't have a four body term from like gamma two to gamma five. You can. Um, oh, between gamma, no, you can, you can have gamma two, gamma three, gamma five, gamma six. You can add, you can, in general, you can add a huge amount, not a huge amount of terms, but you can add a lot of terms. So why start with these? I know, because I didn't have time. So you can just, it's, you pick a basis, it's an 8 by 8 Hamiltonian, and you have two sectors, the even and odd parity. So really it's a 4 by 4 Hamiltonian. So you can solve it exactly and find out that the spectrum is doubly generate everywhere. Okay, so no matter how many of the... Yeah, and it's basically because these states are in different fermion parity sectors. They're always in different fermion parity sectors. It's so, so, so you can just, just take a Hamiltonian and do it at home. It's just a four by f two 4x4 four four matrices. The states are always doubly generate. Well, I guess we should tend to pronounce it a bridge. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's not a bridge.